All right, ready, hey? Yeah. Bur. Bur. Ming. Ming. Um. Um. Birmingham. Birmingham. Hey, everybody. I am Haley. And I am David. And this is Ricky. Welcome back to the soccer show where we talk all things soccer and now puppies. I mean, how can we follow up with that? I know. Oh, you love it, squirming. I mean, okay. I'll, I'll try, but listen, oh, I can't stop. Anyway, last week, Haley and I bet on the outcome of Chelsea versus City, and neither of us won because they drew 2-2. Two, two. But we didn't lose because when we were predicting who to look out for in the match, we mentioned Sam Kerr, Chloe Kelly, Pernilla Harder, and Lauren Hemp, and David. Who scored? I believe it was Kerr, Kelly, Harder, and Hemp. So it was an incredible game. Um, both teams looked really even. Ultimately, Chelsea at the top of the league, but there's still a little bit of wiggle room and City can still win it. Time for some key clips of the week. I'm starting us off here. A little bit of class from Nicolene Sorensen of Everton. Uh, she gets the ball, little cheeky nutmeg, and pulls the trigger. Doesn't go in. Good save in the end. But this game ends 0-0. Just it's kind of was that final finish for both teams. But I loved that. Clearly, I'm confused because that wasn't a goalkeeper. I know. I was, in fact, there was a save in the play, and I didn't even lose my mind about the save. So it, it wow, must be I'm, bad. I'm impressed. Well. Ricky has an, have an, a fantastic effect on you. I'm not sleeping. Listen, I'm going to continue my my bias towards the, the greatest team in the world, Arsenal. Um, Arsenal's second goal was absolutely world class. And I'll show you why. The awareness was ridiculous. Medina's got it on the right, slots it across to Beth Mead, who should probably take a shot. But she notices Jordan Nobbs for an open goal, switches the point of attack. If there's any players watching from youth to pro, that is how you score a goal in the box. Fantastic. Yeah, making it look easy. And that was a huge win for them because Manchester United also got a win. And that kind of heats up that, you know, the, the table, trying to get third on the table there. So speaking of Manchester United, Ella Toon with a brace, she was fantastic all game, just dominated from start to finish. Tottenham pulled one back late, but between her two goals, Kristen Press's fantastic goal, this was a really good team win for them. It's always good to see Tottenham get spanked as well, isn't it? <laughs> you love it. So listen, I'm going to use this little window of time I've got to show everybody the calmest goal line save I've ever seen from Reading. The ball is going in and it's just so casual. She just, ah, oh, it's going in, slides in, saves it and continues the game. Like I've watched it about a hundred times. It does. It, it feels like it should be a tense moment and it's just kind of like, boop, yeah, no big deal. Insane. It's hilarious. Okay, and my favorite segment every week, my save of the week, AKB Chelsea's keeper coming up massive. And this kept the game at 2-2. This just might have kept them top of the table and this might have won the league for them. And obviously, I'm just gonna say this, you know, we have a lot of geogating regulations with Instagram. So I wanted this to be able to make it online. So I am going to have Ricky reenact the save. Cross comes in, Burger drops back, top hand over the bar. And there it is. Save of the week from Berger and Ricky. You know, I want to say save of the week isn't a thing, but I, I can't take that away from Ricky. So we'll you give it to you this week, him. Ricky. You can't take um, that and him. this week's goal of the week. Oh <sighs> my gosh. Faye Bryson walks on the field, bangs in the left foot half volley with some swaz on it into the top corner for Bristol City um, that started that little comeback from Bristol City that they tied the game up in like the last minute to give them hope of staving off relegation. That might have been, I also don't think goal of the week is a thing. However, that just might be- Yes, it is, Hayley. It's an official it goal of the week. be 
a goal of the year contender though because that was absolutely beautiful and to come listen, off the bench not doing listen, anything don't get cocky i mean just, it's you've got a new nice. puppy you've got a new puppy he stopped getting cocky goal like of the so. week is official save of the week isn't no one cares you know what say that to his face oh stop say that to his face i can't i can't all right, today we are so lucky to be joined by one of my closest friends. She plays for Kansas City in the NWSL. She is the captain of the Scottish national team, Rachel Corsi. Thank you for being on the show today. Thank you for having me. What a treat. Right, you're actually, you're actually a Scottish soccer player legend, aren't you? Um, I mean, you've played over 100 games. I'm going to let you say that, Dave. Take it. I'm not usually this nice. <laughs> this is this is very kind so listen Chelsea and City have seemingly locked up first and second place in the only Super League that matters um, but Arsenal and United are like really in a battle for, for third place yeah Rachel Corsi who do you think takes the third place I'm going to say I would be surprised if Arsenal don't finish third now I, you know, so Arsenal's got this game in hand, right? So I, I think that that kind of, even though they're tied on the table right now, that probably gives them an edge. But, you know, in, speaking of this week, obviously these hot topics of relegation and earning your way into tournaments and Champions League, the fight for third is that much more important because third gets into the Champions League tournament while fourth does not. So, Rach, you think Arsenal probably going to take it. What do they need to do in these next couple of games to make sure that they do? I mean, they need to win at least two from two from three. And I think, I want to say the game this midweek is going to be tough for them because West, West Ham haven't had a good season. Absolutely have not had a good season for the amount of money they've spent, the players they have. But it, that's a tough game. You know, you look at it and you think, well, they're in the bottom half of the table. That should be an easy three points. It will be tough. But I think if, you know, two or three, I think it will be comfortable. And I think with the players they have, that's, you know, I, that's a definitely a reasonable expectation. So obviously to bottom of the table, Bristol City and Aston Villa currently sitting at the bottom of the table with 12 points. This off season, you were over in Birmingham. They are two points clear of the relegation zone at the minute. Um, you know, what do you think your old side needs to do to kind of stay above that threshold? Um, and it's not a nice position to be in. You know, you don't want, you don't want to be looking behind you, which I think is where you know, first half of the year, Birmingham did well to get points on the board and, and found themselves around mid-table. And But now... They had a really good centre-back. Uh, <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> no, but they're... Um, I think, to be honest, their fixtures through January, February were tough. And then all of a sudden... And then they had a lot of games cancelled. And you end up finding yourself very quickly just allowing teams to pick points up around you and you start to really worry about what's behind you and, that, and that's the position they've sort of left themselves in. Um, they obviously play the game in hand against Villa is huge for them and if they can win that then I, I certainly think they're they're safe. Um, but if they don't win that then they become very vulnerable to begin to be caught by by both. Well I think Villa would go above them if they won and and obviously that puts them close to Bristol, who are a bit of an unknown. You know, they've picked up some points lately, but um, I, I think Birmingham have a better team. But sometimes when you're in that race at the end, it, it doesn't really matter if your team's better on paper. It's about getting the, the points on the board. Right. Thank you so much for coming on today. Um, I've been a big fan of yours for a long time and we've never actually crossed paths, which is weird. Um, but thanks for coming on. We really appreciate you. Thanks, Dave. That is it for us on The Soccer Show. I am Ricky. And <laughs> I'm David. That is definitely, definitely Ricky. Be sure to subscribe to the YouTube page and also the Just Women's Sports newsletter. Plus, you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Leave some comments. We need attention. Let us know how we're doing. And let me tell you, Ricky, I do believe you've got your own Instagram as well. What is that handle? Please follow me, Ricky the Mini. We will see everybody next week. Bye.